Hello Malty, Maltophobic Moonraking Moonwalkers. <laughs> and thank you to MMA for that mock mention. I'm Ralphie. You're in the Bothy. Which Bothy you're wondering? Is it one of these Bothies up the the highlands of Scotland or across the north of England in remote places where we can go and doss down for the night. No, this is a wee secret bothy tucked away on an island in the middle of the Irish Sea. It's my hauf, it's my gaff, it's my little studio where I sit behind the barrel and provide you malt mates with malt moments. And this is no exception. This, and you've tuned in right at the best time, is a mock moment. Welcome to Ralphie Review 942 Extras. And I've just reviewed an independent bottling of a single malt whiskey and I gave it a high mark. I gave it 89 out of 100. That's a good mark that. That's a really good mark. Because this is a really good Scotch whiskey. It's from a small independent bottler. One you won't have seen before, for a very simple reason. They've only just started. And they're not alone. There's about a dozen independent bottlers started in the last year. And what they are doing is they're quite accurately and correct. Excuse me. <laughs> it's the whiskey that does it, and it's the whiskey that will cure it too. Anyway. Back to the narrative. Small independent bottlers are supplying a very valuable service to malt mates like you and I because they go out and they buy on the secondary market barrels of whiskey either directly from distilleries or from wholesalers who buy direct from distilleries in bulk and then sell on to independent bottlers. And traditionally there's been about a couple of dozen of independent bottlers who have been prominent. They've always been around. They've always been with us. And it's some independent bottlers like Sistanti and um, Silver Seal, for example, who have given us some classic whiskey moments. The... They're remembered, although they're not really available anymore, they're remembered with a great deal of affection and their bottlings command a high price at auction because of the quality. And they're not official bottlings, so they don't get the same attention from collectors. They're not Macallan, so most folk aren't interested. And yet these bottlings are consistently superior to Macallan in terms of quality in my opinion. And, they, and particularly in the UK, UK is, the UK is the home of independent bottling. And it's all right for me in the Bothy, somewhere in the Irish Sea, because I'm right in the centre of the British Isles. Literally, I can go to the summit of my local hill, it's called Snaefell, and I can see every other country that makes up the British Isles. England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland. And we also have, it's called the, the, the Island of Seven Kingdoms because you've got the Kingdom of the Island and then you see the Kingdom of Heaven too. So there you go. Thought I'd share that with you. But being right in the heart of the British Isles, I have access to these independent bottlings and they make a very welcome break from the predictability of some official bottlings and also the quality of some official bottlings which at times can be patchy and unreliable but the thing is for the official bottlings they are geared towards the consumer and the consumer is relatively ambivalent and passive so long as it tastes vaguely like whiskey they're going to be happy especially if they can go onto Amazon or into a big supermarket or into a big retailer and they can get it at a nominal discount, particularly the supermarkets. They'll say suddenly we've got £20 off this bottling and they've got the kind of bright yellow little badge to show the price drop and people think they're getting a bargain and they're not. 
because the selection they have on them, on that shelf, is competent, comp competent enough in terms of quality for the beginner and for people getting into single malt whiskey. And for people who do not mind and do not care that it's chill filtered and bottled at 40%. And I don't blame them because you really wouldn't want to start your whiskey journey with a cask strength whiskey that's chock full of flavour because it will blow your socks off. But we're now in a different age. This is 2022 and primarily due to the internet and the education, opinions and perspectives and feedbacks and commentary and the ease of access to immediate information that goes beyond published books because published books, as soon as they're published, they're out of date. Or award systems where distilleries will boast awards on their label that they won two, three, ten, twenty years ago. But it's hardly the same whiskey now, is it? I mean, we can see through that little gimmick. And it is a gimmick. But for the passive consumer, they're happy with the gimmick. So long as they get the wee discount and they'll have the whiskey bottle sat in the shelf of their cocktail cabinet and it'll stop between the gin, you know, the pink gin or the glowing gin with the lights behind it. And on the other side, they'll maybe have a token bottle of Jack Daniels. And, and basically that's it. And they'll have it to see in the New Year because New Year's a kind of Scottishy thing. Someday I'll tell you why New Year's a Scottish thing. And it's not just because they banned Christmas in Scotland for many, many years. It's more than that. But there's more and more small independent bottlers starting up now. And I notice that the overview that I have is that more of these independent bottlers are building up small contracts to supply small volumes as international export to other countries through specialist importers or through specialist ships who do their own importing. And therefore for specialist whiskey shops and for for high-end liquor importers they'll bring in and start off with some highly desirable official bottlings like off the top of my head for example Glenallachie which is now relatively easy to find in many states in the United States of America but it didn't used to be but you can do now because the specialist importer and distributor has now opened up to distribute these whiskies further and further afield and with the official bottlings following in their tail will be the independent bottlings using the same pipeline using the same corridor of access through the specialist importer or the specialist importer distributor retailer. So you can expect wherever you are in the world in the next year or two years, it depends how the forthcoming global recession goes. And by the way, it's far more scripted than you think, but moving on. I don't think it'll last as long as, as it's made out in the media because we're getting gas, gaslighted there. But we, we bear this in mind because if we want to be able to still buy our whiskies at an affordable price, increasingly we're being chased away from the official bottlings, particularly with higher age statements. And we're looking at the, the more basic official bottlings that we've already tried and we know them. And we're thinking, well, will I go for the familiar or will I ha look at something else in the shelf or be advised by the retailer? That they've got something else and they may well say by the way we've got a small independent bottler and we've got a selection of American corn whiskey, um, Caribbean rum and Scotch single malts and even maybe have Scotch blended malts and this is where you want to keep your eyes open look out for them because when they first become available these will be the ambassador bottlings they will be competitively priced and they will be good quality because they're paving the way for acceptability recognition 
and they want to impress you. There's no marketing department. The bottle's the marketing department. And if it's good juice in it, then it's effective marketing. Bad juice, ineffective marketing. And then nobody's buying the bottle. And the retailer's not going to be happy about that. So do you know what the retailer's going to do? Do you know what the distributor's going to do? The specialist distributor, retailer, who, who, who'll also, who's also negotiating with the postal service to send out the parcels by courier because it's more and more an important part of their volume of business. This is all coming together at one time. They're going to ask for samples so they taste and try before they buy to sell on to you. So it's in the interests of the specialist importer and the specialist retailer who's paying higher and higher rates and rent and paying loads of money for all the bureaucratic documentation that they have to have and renew every year. They're going to make sure they get the good stuff in. So they want to impress you because when you're impressed, you're a repeat customer. Now, in the UK, it's already up and running. And now I don't often mention the big online retailers, but I'm going to name two, two of them who bottle their own under their own brand. They have their, their own independent bottler now. And their bottlings are realistically priced, certainly in comparison to official bottlings. And they also have a more advanced and established distribution, postal distribution network. In other words, these big re online retailers have more reach in sending out the whiskey than the smaller ones do who are stuck with smaller volume contracts. It's not their fault, it's just the lie of the land. And these two big retailers are Master of Malt and the Whiskey Exchange. Both based in London, in the south of England, and exporting globally. So just go to their websites and see what they have on offer. See what they're doing. Check out the reviews on them because this is me now giving you my knowledge to help you, wherever you are globally, start to be aware and get access to these single malts that I'm reviewing, but because of such small volume, these particular bottles, is, it's unlikely that you're going to get hold of them unless you're actually in the UK. But it's, everything's, in, everything's moving, everything's turning over, everything's in a state of commercial flux, and there's nothing stimulates economies of countries around the world more than the downside of a depression or a recession, I'll call it a recession rather than a depression, but hey, everybody's depressed in a recession no matter how big or little it happens to be or how long it goes on. It's a stimulus, right? It's a stimulus for more cutting edge trade. And one of the cutting edge trades, and it's good for Scotch whiskey, to get these single cask singularity, single malts out there because at the end of the day these are always without fail the finest presentations of Scotch whisky you can get hold of due to the strength, the naturalness of the presentation until filtered in natural colour and the fact that they're single cask. It doesn't always work but often it does and it does very well you get the absolute epitome of an experience of a single malt. Really, you're buying a bottle showing what single malt can really, really do when it's, when it's playing a solo. I'm Rafi. I hope you found this extra as useful. If you have, please subscribe and click like and do leave a comment, malt mates, because I do kind of check through them. I can't, I can't respond to them all now because there's just too many as the channel continues to grow. But I do kind of read through and leave a few hearts now and again just to acknowledge the comments being left. And, and basically, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Uh, and if you're, if you're really interested, you, you can find more of my content on my Patreon channel, Ralph, uh, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com, Ralphie, R-A-L-F-Y. Thanks, Mop Mates, and I'll be back again soon with another review of an official bottling this time because I'm doing interchangeables. 
indie pub bottling, official bottling. Indie bottle, official, official bottling. Because, you know, you've got to spread the love.